In an earlier video, I gave you five tips on how to present stories. I'd like to give you another five here. One of the things that you have to do in a story is create drama. Build up the tension. Build it up to a high point where there is resolution. The problem is solved. And you can wind up the story. But how do you create the drama? Obviously, you put a moving picture in the minds of the listeners, the viewers. As a storyteller, you need to disappear virtually. They'll see you, but only out of the periphery, if I might speak it that way, of their attention, because their attention will be on your words. And your words need to evoke that drama. There's no point in reading a story out of a book unless you're very good at it, very good. But if you're telling a story to an audience live, you'll be standing out in front of them. The words you use to create the drama need to be short, punchy, easily understood words. If they have to think to interpret what you're saying, you've lost them. So remember the first tip in building the drama you can't keep this up for too long because it will become monotonous. But in building up the drama, short, punchy words, short sentences, delivered in that passionate way, or with certain, with, certainly with the right vocal variety, which catches their attention. Second point in this one, the story must appeal to you. It must be something that you want to tell the audience. Best if you strongly desire to tell it. It's been burning inside of you. You've got to get this story out. If it's a personal story out of your own life and it's affected you in some dramatic, profound way, then you'll want to tell it. You might feel a little bit vulnerable as you tell it, but tell it. That's the most powerful. A story that has appealed to you. Now remember this. You never interrupt a story to show a model or a visual aid or something of that nature. If you do, you'll break the continuity. Remember, you are the visual aid. Even though they're scarcely seeing you as they listen to your words, they are still watching you. If you do something untoward, something unexpected, which breaks their attention, breaks their story, the story that you're creating for them, then you'll lose them temporarily. And it might be hard to recapture them again. So remember, you are the visual aid. Don't rely on PowerPoint or any other visual aids to put your stories across. Fourth point in this little five more on storytelling. Just as a joke best told, ends with the punchline, so a story ends with the right words, the right words. Those right words could be the same words you open the story with, the same sentences. That doesn't matter. The point is the audience needs to know exactly when the story ends and it's obvious. If you have to stop 
and then explain to the audience what the story is about or that it's finished, then the story has failed. The story has to be complete in itself. And the audience is aware of that. When the story finishes, it finishes. Fifth point, just as in anything, any sport such as golf or playing darts, or learning a skill like playing the piano, in storytelling as in public speaking, and the two go hand in glove, practice, practice, practice. So important. The more practice you get, the better you will get at it. So keep up the practice. Do what I'm doing here. Use your webcam. Cost you nothing. Except a little time. Put in the time. Put in the effort. Practice, practice, practice. So to reiterate those five points. Create drama by using the right types of words, short words, short sentences. Use a story that appeals to you. To you. And if it's the story that has commonality with the others, it will appeal to your audience too. You are the visual aid. Don't interrupt your story by introducing visual aids. Just as a punchline should end the joke, so should the right sentence end your story. And remember, practice, practice, practice. Practice might never make perfect, but it will bring you towards perfection.